Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. So in today's video, we are going to be taking this guy and turning him into this guy. In this video, we are specifically going to be covering what I do to sand veneer. I picked up this technique recently and it works so, so well. Since implementing it, I have had way less strain on my arms. It's a lot easier to get out like big grooves that are in the veneer and all of that. It's so nice. Keep watching to find out how I get a perfect sand. If you guys are new here, my name is Marissa and I flip furniture. If you haven't yet and want to, please make sure to like and subscribe and do all those things so that you guys can stay tuned for what is to come. I have some exciting stuff. Next week on the 25th, I am going to be releasing a video on a Saturday, which is a little different for me. I am doing a furniture flipping challenge with all of these lovely people. And we are doing the $100 challenge where we are trying to do a flip for only $100. So all of our materials, paint, uh, hardware, the piece itself, all of that, we can only spend $100 on it. So we'll see if I can do it, who knows. Yes, I will still be releasing a video on Thursday. And yes, I will be releasing a video on that Saturday also. So two videos, two in one week. It's never happened in the history of Miss Flips. I already have my piece. I'm going to be flipping this guy right here. Beautiful mid-century modern piece. You guys know I love my tall boy dressers. So make sure you subscribe to see what I'm gonna do with it. So without further ado, let's get flipping. So this piece was actually in pretty good shape. All it had were a couple of dings on the top that I was going to easily get rid of with my new sanding method. And it had been raining a lot, so I decided to pitch a tent just in case. So I'm showing you this real time so you guys can hear how I'm sanding and also watch how I'm sanding. The reason why I want you to listen to how I'm sanding is to tell where my pressure is at. I'm not putting too much pressure onto it so that the sander gets like that low rumble. I'm just putting enough to just handle it and let it do its thing. And I'm showing you guys how slow I'm going because the slower you go, the less likely you are to get those squiggly lines. So at first I couldn't tell whether or not the wood pattern was printed on or whether or not it was actual veneer. And as I sanded, I found that it was, and look how beautiful. Wait until you see when it is completely sanded. Also, for my sandpaper, I'm using a reusable sanding pad that I'll make sure to include in the description below, but I absolutely love them. They are amazing and work so much better than your average sanding pad. So this right here is a really good example of what you should be getting with your low grit. So when you're starting with your lowest grit, you want patches of bare wood and you want that top layer of this like shiny stuff over here to be completely gone. So you're just getting that top layer off with your lowest grit and you're not really worrying about getting all of the paint off with the first sandpaper that you use. You just want the patches of the bare wood and some patches of paint are fine because you're gonna go in there with two more grits probably, if not more, depending on what your preference is. I use three grits, so this would be my lowest grit. This would be my 80 grit sandpaper. Your highest grit sandpaper should be the only sandpaper that you use on completely bare wood. Once the whole piece looks like this, then you can move on to your medium grit sandpaper. And then once all of this is gone, kind of like this spot over here, then you can move on to the highest grit that you have. So yeah. And this is how it should look once you are done with your first grit. So once your second grit is done, it should be looking like this, where you can still kind of see remnants of the previous color here and there, but it's just really light, just surface. 
so that now we can go in with our last 220 grit. And now at this stage in the process, I like to go over the surface with a pencil, making sure to make really good marks all over the surface. That way I know where I have been already with my sander and I make sure I cover the entire surface completely with my final grit. And look how clean it is! Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. And now I tried to go in and do kind of the same thing on the sides, but it turns out that the veneer on the sides are way thinner than the one on top, and it turned out looking like this. So I decided to pass on that and try doing it to the sliding doors, but I had the exact same results. I ended up just piercing through the so I decided to have the legs as the main accent on the face of the piece. I was originally going to have the trim of the doors bare wood as well, but that didn't end up happening. I ended up painting over them anyways, so yeah. For the dusting off before I painted, I used tack cloth, and honestly, I had no idea how amazing this stuff was until I used it. It is great. And I did a final little vacuum just to make sure I got all the last pieces of dust off before I started painting. And to get ready for my priming, I make sure to tape all of the parts that I didn't want to be painted. And I don't know why I thought that this back part needed tape, I'm not going to be painting the back. But anyways, I'm using a no sand primer, so I didn't have to sand this piece before I started priming it, which was great. It is a time saver. So while I have you guys here, if you haven't yet and would like to, please make sure to subscribe and like and comment and do all those things. Support your girl. Let's be friends. I'm going to be putting on two coats of primer for this project, so between coats I let it dry and then once it's dry I go over it with a really fine sanding block, that way I can ensure the smoothest finish possible. And before you get to painting, make sure you are wiping off your surface to get rid of all the dust that you just made with your sanding block. So even though I was sanding between each coat, I still ended up with some brush strokes here and there, so a paint sprayer is definitely in the works. I am saving up for one for sure, but if you guys have any recommendations on which paint sprayer you guys like and uh, which one I should get, please leave it in the comments below. I would love your recommendations. And for the finishes, I am using a wipe-on poly for the wood and then a regular brush-on polyurethane top coat, both in satin finish. There really isn't a rhyme or reason for this, I just personally like how the wipe-on poly looks on wood versus a brushed-on poly, and yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. And we're doing three coats for the top and two coats for the rest of it, baby!
And here, my sweet loves, is the final product. Ain't she a beaut? If you guys notice, this piece looks an awful lot like this boy right here. Although I had originally planned on replacing the glass with cane, I quickly realized that I wasn't going to be able to do that because I could not get the sliding doors out without having to take off the entire top. And when I tried taking off the entire top, I realized that there was glue going all down the line. And so if I took it up, it would just tear and it would be a whole mess that I did not feel like doing. So I didn't do that. But if you guys want to learn how to replace windows with cane, please make sure to go check out these, this video. I don't know what side it's going to be on, but either way, make sure to go check that out. I specifically made a playlist for where I replace glass with cane. So make sure to check that playlist out if you're interested in learning how I do that. So surprise, surprise, we actually are keeping this piece. I loved the way that the other piece turned out and I always wanted to kind of make my own version of that. So let's talk price. I bought this piece for $10, only $10. It's such a high quality piece and I got it for 10, blown away. Anyways, so the paint I bought was from Sherwin-Williams and it was about $30, but I only probably used about five of that 30. It was a big container and it's only down like that much. The wipe on poly and the polyurethane top coat for the paint, I actually already had, but I will make sure to include their full prices here. All in all, I spent about $40 like for this project. I spent $40, including the piece and the paint. Those were the two materials that I needed. And yeah, the other piece I sold for around $400, so you can make a really good profit off of a piece like this, especially if you figure out a way to replace that glass. Thank you so much, you guys. I hope you learned a lot in this video. And if you guys have any more tricks for me or any more tips, I would love to hear them, so please leave them down in the comments. I am always looking to improve my techniques, and I hope that you guys stay tuned for next week's video. Stay flipping, guys. Mwah.